Good aim, the name of Jesus, which is a strong tower that the righteous shall run into it and be saved. We give you praise, honor, and glory for everything that was said and done thus far. And God, we invite the Holy Spirit to continue to abide in this place. Oh God, that we may be blessed by his presence, that he may lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. We ask you now, God, at this preaching time that your anointings are fresh. And God, we pray that Jimmy won't be seen, but Jesus, the risen Savior, the soon coming King, will come up and be alive in this place. We pray, God, no flesh will be glorified in your sight, that your son Jesus may be lifted up and exalted, that men, women, boys, and girls know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father except by him. And God, these things we ask in your son Jesus' name, and it is so, and the people of God say amen, amen, and for the Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I will encourage you, if y'all don't have to walk, don't walk. If you don't have to, y'all hold on a little while. I know you got to go to the bathroom sometime, but if you don't have to walk, don't walk on me. Amen, please. Amen. We do give honor to Christ who's head of my life and our life and should be the head of our life. If he's not, you ought to give him an opportunity to be. Amen. Things change when Christ comes into our lives. Amen? Amen. And then we get a new beginning. We get a new start. Amen. He'll turn our midnights into day. Amen. Amen. So we actually do, we would do good. We honor my wife. Amen. As well as my children. Amen. All of our evangelists and prophets. Thank God for you, all of our uh, crusaders and our deacon staff and their wives. We do honor you today. Amen. The male chorus. Amen. Amen. The little train that could. Amen. Praise God. They got that. They shoot, shoot, shoot. They didn't have the full caboose, but there was in, in, amen, in, 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 at, amen, that was going at it, amen. Praise God, so we bless God for them, amen. If you do, you, 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 you all do know that this is our relationship month, the month of June, amen, is here to encourage us, amen, to do, uh, to, to know, amen, because everybody just don't know, amen, and so our job is to encourage you along the way, amen, because marriage is work. Amen? It's work. Amen? I know it looks glamorous. It's good to have somebody on your arm, but it's work. Amen? It's not, amen, because after, you know, we leave the presence of people, we got to live with each other. Amen, somebody. Amen? So if you will, amen, we're going to be with you for a little bit. Amen? Because we got another service to attend, but if you do have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Genesis, the second chapter. We thank God for Minister Palmer. Amen? God bless you. Man is brown. Amen. Everyone who's called to serve in whatever capacity that God has called you, amen, doesn't make one greater than the other because of a title. Amen. God called us to serve regardless who you are. Amen. Genesis, amen, the second chapter, and we'll read for the sake of time, the 23rd verse. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Amen. And I'd like to leave this thought with you this morning. Amen. Before and after. Before and after. Amen. We understand that marriage is an agreement. It's a covenant between a man and a woman. Amen. As I said on last week, it cannot be two men, it cannot be two women. That's not marriage. Amen. That's an abomination. Amen. So it has to be a covenant between a man as well as a woman. But I want to know, it's, it's, it's late as night tonight. It's just late as night. Ladies, y'all, y'all brace yourselves. It's late as night today. Amen. So I want to let you know, brother, I want to say before and after. Now, what we don't do, we get caught up. As men, we get caught up in the moment, we get caught up in how fine she is, we get caught up on how pretty she is, and how she's dressed, and how sexy she is. There's a before and there's an after. Amen. We, we, we get caught up how good she can cook before we marry her. Amen. How, how, how she keep the house before we marry her. Amen. And so this, there, in this life, there's a before and there's an after. Amen. Amen. So we find out, amen, we, 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 we're dating. Her now and amen and we're seeing her, we're going out a lot and she's looking good and amen we, we haven't seen her yet outside of wearing makeup amen this, this before we get the opportunity to see her amen without her makeup on amen this is a tale we, we every time we go to her house it's clean now because we're in the before stage of our relationship so in, in the midst of being in the before stage everything is copacetic everything 
look just like everything look the way it should look because they are working on it. They don't want you to see no flaws. Yeah. This is the before stage of a relationship. Amen, somebody. Amen. But you find out that once you get into the relationship and then once you say, I do, then you get into the after. Yeah. And then the after part is the way to change. You get a chance to wake up and say, what my wife? Because yeah. there's no makeup. There's no hair do going on. There's nothing going on. Amen. But the natural her. Yeah. Hello, somebody. I know her teeth look straight, but you come to find out she do got dentures. Amen. Amen. So, but this is the after. So if you don't love her for who she is, these things going to bother you. Hello, somebody. But if you love her for who she is, Baby, you need to pick you up some preparation. Oh, not no pepper. Oh, some some, some different cream. Hello, somebody. See, see, see. You gotta realize that after, after you're married, you know, you gotta realize that that, that, that yeah, yeah, preparation is. Hey, man, yeah, you may have to pick it up for. You no, know, even in the first part of your little relationship or your marriage, amen, it's something that you don't want him to see, you don't want him to buy, you know what I mean? But after you get married and get accustomed to each other, those things become natural. But I understand that men and women will do things prior to getting married. We'll act a certain way prior to getting married. Amen. And this is what we fall into. This is the trap that we fall into as men and women that we buy the first scene. Amen. We buy the first act that he or she does. But yet, when it's all over, when we tie into it, when we give our all to it, now we got to deal with the real thing. So there's a big four and a half. Men and women. Hello, somebody. Make you all kind of promises, but yet now that you're married to them, they was cooking before you married, now you, I'm tired. I work just like you work. But baby, that ain't what you told me, but proud of us getting married. I have your I have your clothes laid out, I have your water ran for you, I have your, 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 your stove hot, baby, you got I take care of you. But now that you're in the aftermath, cold stove, baby, Cold. Cold still rain. So that's the before and after. So we got we have to realize that we're not doing it for love, it doesn't work. Listen here, I, 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 that's just a little preliminary y'all gave y'all in. If you turn your Bible with me to Timothy, Titus, I mean Titus, the second chapter, and, then, and we're dealing with the woman today. Women are given instruction by God how to uh, regard their husband as well as their children as well as the home. Amen. So women, you have a big, you have a, a, a lot to bite off. Amen. I mean, you have a big, a large responsibility yeah. because you got the husband, you got the wife, you got the husband, you got the children, and as well as the home. Amen. Amen. Listen to what the Bible tells us in, 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 in Titus and then the second chapter and the third verse, the aged women, likewise that they be in, and be in behavior as becoming holy. Not for, uh, false accusers. But y'all know we got more aged women in the church that keep the most stuff going than young women. When they're supposed to be help instructing the young women. It says this, that they may teach the young women to be sober. To love their husbands, to love their children, that the word of God will not be blasphemed. So the job of the older women in the church is to show the young women how to love their husbands. Amen. And I said it on last week, the reason why it ain't so, because they don't know how to love their own. Can't teach where you have to go. Can't teach what you don't know, y'all. Can't leave where you didn't go. Amen. So listen. So, so if, I, if I want my daughter to be blessed, amen, if I want my son to be blessed, as a woman, if you want your daughter blessed, you want your daughter in a happy relationship, show her the way. How do I show her the way? I submit myself to my own husband. I know y'all feel that. You ain't going to run over me. If he, if he love you, he ain't going to run you over. It's just your nasty flesh. Can I help y'all out? Your nasty flesh that don't want to submit 
to the person that God has given rule and authority over you. If you don't want nobody to tell you, if you don't want nobody to be over you, amen, don't you get married, ladies. God ain't gonna change it. Listen here. It tells to the honor of our mother and our father. That our days may be long upon the on the land with the Lord given to us, Exodus 20, 12. It tells the children, amen, that, that you honor your father and mother. But listen here. Do you expect a child to honor their mother and father, amen, to, to honor their mother and father when they see the mother not honoring the daddy? Disrespect brings on disrespect. Listen here. The problem is we have with the men is that we talk wrong about leadership, about headship. We think it's supposed to be dogmatic. We think our wives are supposed to become our personal slaves. This ain't what headship is all about. And this is why women don't want to submit to men because men don't got the dogmatic spirit because the pastor said, the Bible said that I'm the head of the house. <laughs> No, no, that ain't how it go. The Bible tells a woman to submit to her husband. Every woman got to submit to their own husband. Now listen here. There ain't no way you can be good to me and honest to me and fair to me as your pastor because I'm somebody else's husband and you can't be fair to your own. If that makes sense, anybody? Don't make me no case you ain't made brother man. I don't need your pies if you ain't gave me. I ain't trying to get killed over no pie. <laughs> now listen, let me, let me help y'all ladies out because you gotta realize uh, submission. Submission is an attitude. Y'all hear me? Submission is the attitude. Submission comes from the heart. Yes, sir. And see, this is why we can't submit because we see our mama raising all kind of hell with that. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Maybe you did, maybe you did, but you don't see it somewhere. Yeah. I ain't gonna give my heart to him. He gonna treat me like no dog. He gonna dog me out. I wonder who canceled y'all before y'all got mad. Because he should have told y'all better than that. He didn't come to dog you out. You should have seen everything he was about before you married him. And people do have a tendency to change. Hello sometimes. And then look at it. Sometimes we call, and then sometimes we push people into stuff that they get into. Y'all ain't got to agree with it. Yeah, they got a mind of their own. And then, but if you was taking care of business. Oh, it don't make it right. But it make it so sometimes. Amen. Uh-huh. I know that's a good preacher right there. Y'all ain't got to tell you. <laughs> it's an attitude, not just an action. Submission begins in your heart. Listen to this story about this little boy. And this is how, brother, and this I'm gonna help y'all out. This is how women are. Y'all, 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 don't y'all put your pocket down, put your makeup kit, don't be throwing. There's a little story about a little boy that was instructed by his teacher to sit down and be quiet. Because he was rebellious. His nature was of a rebelliousness. He did not want to do this, but he forced, he was forced by the teacher to do it. Later, the children in his classroom child him saying, Boy, you really sat, you really sat down and shut up when the teacher approached you uh, with the panel. The rebellious boy replied, I may have sat, I, I may have been sitting down on the outside, but I wasn't sitting down on the inside. Hello, somebody. Hey, man, now, now, this is what happened. Many women are submit, submit, they submitted on the outside. But on the inside, they raised all the hell you can put up with. They act like they submit, they act like they humble, they act like they suffer to their husband. But then on the inside, it's a different story. They do that for the public. But everybody say, oh, she show honor her husband. She show good to that man. And if he can tell the rest of the story, if you only knew. <laughs> so the little boy was rebellious. His rebelliousness wasn't outly shown, but it was on the inside. How many of y'all know you're still guilty of sin and that if you rebel against your husband, even if you don't open your mouth, you're thinking it? Uh, they may listen, Palmer. So, we got to be careful that we don't have any resentment in our hearts. 
We got to honor those that God has placed over us. Amen. That, you, you, that the Bible tells us, don't get it wrong, the Bible tells us to submit one to another. Amen. But, but women have, amen. But you, you got to realize, do I want to be married? Do I want to be married? Because if it means for me, I'm not, if, I'm not submission material. If you can't submit to your husband, you don't need to be married. If you can't submit to your boyfriend before and after. If you can't submit now, you can submit later. Hello, somebody. Let me share this with y'all. With God, that's a divine order. Y'all, ladies, you can't change. I don't care who you is. That God has a divine order, and it cannot and will not be changed because of nobody. Yeah. This is what the Bible says. First Corinthians eleven three says, and you write it down if you want to, because people don't forget. But I would have you know that the head of every woman, head of every man, is Christ. Y'all get that? And the head of the woman is the man. I don't care if you're pastoring, I don't care if you're bishoping, I don't care what you call yourself, the head of every woman is the man. Because it what? If I say the man, we're talking about Jesus right here. See that? It says Christ. Every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of every wo uh, woman, the woman is the man, the husband. And the head of Christ is God. That is the order of God. Anytime we change the order, we're out of the will of God. You, no matter how mad you get, you'll never be the head as a woman. Do y'all understand that? Well, let me go a little further. I don't care how much money you make. It don't make you the head. It don't give you the ability to call no shot. Who I bring home the biggest. I fly in the bank. I make more money than you, bro. What you? You can't tell me what to do. This is why something. Oh, it don't make no difference how much money you make. My God, tell me I'm still the head huncher. Yeah. Hello, somebody. So money don't change. Amen. How God has established money don't change protocol. Yeah, yeah I may be riding in your car. I may not have that, but it's my car. It's our car. Yeah, I may be moved in with you in your house, but it's our house. And I'm the head of it. My name may not be on the tower yet, but I'm still the head of it. Do y'all get this? Stuff don't determine makes you the head. It's God that makes you the head. No one will have nothing but one time to tell me to get out of the house. If I got in a relationship and got married and I moved in with Sister Hill and it was her house proud of me, meeting me, and she tell me to get out, she got to tell me for one time, get out of my house! I ain't got much to pack no way. Sister <laughs> Hill, I ain't got much to pack. Get my tote bag. I'll be out. Ain't no hundred dollar child. I didn't really mean it. Yeah, you did. Because guess what? You got that's a selfish spirit. That means that I will never ever be able to come in and be Lord of this house. But sometimes this type of teaching helps people. Ain't gonna throw it all out with the bad one because sometimes people just don't know. How the way you gonna tell me you love somebody and you will tell them to get out? Just because you're not getting your way. Come on, ladies, y'all get with me. Yeah. You ain't get it the way you want to get it. You ain't you, you won't do what you want to do, and all of a sudden now get out. Yeah. 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 Ephesians. Yeah. Don't you get it, my car? What? <laughs> you wasn't saying that when I was making the payment. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. You draw what I paid for. Yeah. And it's your car. Yeah. Oh, hell so you money we were trying to send it to the man. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 5, 21 says, and Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Why submit yourself to your own husband and unto the Lord? Now, this is, I know I've been in church long enough that there are more women that are submitted to the pastor than they are to their husband. And wrong. 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 That's wrong. That's wrong. And if anybody's allowing it, if anybody's teaching it, they're dead wrong. 
Pastor my husband. He ain't nothing but a drunk. He's yours. He's still out there like cocaine. He's yours. Apparently, you ain't been doing what you need to be doing to get him saved because the Bible says saying to my wife was saying to the husband. Stop calling him a drunk and tell him what mighty man of God that he is and God will save him. Why is he in the world? Because you won't cook. Why you got a girlfriend? Because you won't cook half the time. He going somewhere else to eat. Hello? You watch your own clothes. Well, they got somebody else watching them now. Come on, somebody. Y'all are going to be funny. And so, so something we cause on ourselves by acting the way we act. If you want somebody else to live, that's what they say. I don't understand that even saved and unsaved, sometimes it's on the same level. Hello? <laughs> For the husband is head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husband in every everything. Listen here. Could I help y'all out with some everything? <laughs> Listen. Baby, even though you carry it, it's on your body, but the Bible said it belongs to him. Hello sometime. Hello, is there anybody out there? Listen, let me tell you something. We're mean. God can fix it that we don't need your participation. You can be telling all you want to. We don't need your participation. Hello. You got to be submissive in everything. Hello. Because we, we ain't all the emotions. To, oh, we, they ain't us. We, we get into it, but ain't, they ain't us. That's y'all with it. Look here. Where we all at? I don't need your participation. I need your body. So, so listen here. So listen here. So I ain't. I don't have to hear the discouraging words that I'm tired. I'm sick. I ain't feeling well. Y'all be surprised. Hello, somebody. So we got to submit to that man in everything. Get on some bottom. What's up? <laughs> Get you one of them nine hour, five hour drinks if they got to. <laughs> Keep you going. <laughs> now listen here. Now, now, now listen, I say that because women, brother in will help. Sometimes women will use their body to get what they want. <laughs> They'll do it. You ain't acting right, you ain't doing what they want you to do. Amen, brother, they'll shut Walmart down. And it's supposed to be a 24-hour day store, 24-7. Just because he won't take you out to dinner, you're not going to have intimacy with him. Hello, somebody, it's wrong. Submit yourself to him get in everything. So listen, listen, I got some news for y'all. What's happening there is a woman trying to absurd her authority over a man with her body. And some of y'all go for it. Amen. Some of y'all go for it. And look here, brother. Y'all need to know how she want to go on strike, go on strike too. I ain't going to be begging you. I got to go on strike too. He who might have stayed on him is in perfect peace. Get closer to God while she on strike. Amen. Amen. When you come on strike and you wonder why he ain't still asking because he thinks you still on strike. Even though you love it, love it, you still on strike. They'll draw you back in if you allow them to draw you back in so they can dictate, so they can have authority over you with their bodies. Look here. Now that I know the prostitutes don't broke that kind of fight, you give her what you want, boom. He ain't married to no prostitute, he married to you. Why are you holding out? In other words, for those that are not married, hey amen, baby, you can't hold out. This ain't the NFL. They hold it out. 
the agreement ain't what they want to be. But guess what? When you make an agreement, you make it between you and that person and then God. Amen. God first and then you and that person. So you can't hold out and get what you want because you're mad. Doesn't mean that you can't show up. You ain't going to participate. Just show up. Put a fake smile on if you want to. Turn the lights off. Who cares? But you're wrong if you're doing that. Hold it out because you can't get your way. <laughs> Listen to this. Isaiah 3 12 says this. As for my people, children are oppressors. The women rule over them. Oh, my people, that they would lead the causes thee to error and destroy the way of thy path. Listen here now. The reason why our children are being rebellious is because they're seeing it in us. Look at here, look, look what happens now. Let me tell y'all something. With that type of spirit I just got to talk about, you know what that is? I mean, if you turn your Bible, you ain't got to turn that, but in the book of Kings, the first, cha uh, first Kings, about the 20th, uh, first chapter, it talks about a woman by the name of Jezebel. Now, I know y'all been taught that Jezebel is all about makeup and earrings and uh, a fashion family, perfume, Chanel number no. nine, Dame Jezebel. Anytime as a woman or a man, well, we're talking about y'all ladies today. That's what these ladies now. Anytime as a woman, if you gotta, if you try to manipulate your husband, if you try to manipulate it, now if she's manipulating you as a boyfriend or girlfriend, when you become a husband, guess what? And the beat goes on. And the beat goes on. She'll keep doing it. Oh, he'll keep doing it. So Jezebel ruled her husband Ahab. Now, one thing I'm going to tell y'all, I love everybody, but one thing Pastor Gay said is just me. When I see a man and a woman run over, I live by myself first. I ain't telling nobody get no divorce. But if the cold day in hell, which we know ain't going to happen, if I let a woman rule me, I don't care what she calls herself, I don't care what time, you ain't ruling this brother right here. I know my body. And any woman that's trying to rule her husband is going to burn in hell. That's not your position. So Je Jezebel, she ran Brother Ahab. Hello. She ran. DJ told him what to do. Baby, he didn't want you to come up with some ideas, but guess who get the last say so? Now, move on. Y'all got off quiet. Let me move on. Mom, they my keys right there. Crank it up. <laughs> Listen to this. Don't worry. The me ain't going to get there, so don't worry about it. It's to help all of us. Amen. Ain't none of us out of the woods, y'all. We all need some work. Now, I'm talking to y'all about a Christian duties of, a, uh, the, the, the duties of a wife as well as a mother. Now, we find out, hey amen, now, now sometimes we give too much time. If, if you have a husband that are not saved, we give too much time trying to get him saved rather than, hey amen, doing what we need to do as a wife and a mother. If you spend, hey man, now look at you got Christian tapes, you got Christmas stuff all over the house, Christian music playing, and guess what, that man ain't, ain't changed yet. <laughs> now, instead of playing all that Christian music, if you had a hot stove and a cookie of food on it, the Bible said, love and kindness have I, I drawn the amen. That man don't want to hear about, and then he'll hear about Jesus in a, in a matter of time, but show him you love him. Amen. <laughs> Show him you love him. Show him you love him. More you love your car. More you love your house. Show him you love him. Now look here, it's good to have a neat and clean house, but that man needs to be ministered to as well. Hey man, you can't minister to the house and don't minister to the man. Well, Pastor, how do I minister to my husband? You minister to your husband by doing your wife with duties. Amen? Now, if you feel like you're, finna, you're cleaning your house and you're detailing your house, you feel like you're going to give out the energy. See what his needs are before you give out. <laughs> Save him a quarter of it. Hello, somebody. Hey, man, because we see, sometimes men don't say anything about it. We just sit back, we observe, and we say, man, sure love be doing that and be with me. Oh, man, say that to y'all. You don't want to say that. You love be doing that and be You love be that. You love be doing this. You love be on the computer. You love be doing this. You love to be with me. You, you, you like that more than me? So why, 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 why the Bible says that love and kindness have I drawn it. So if, as a woman, if you show him that you love him by 
doing, keeping house and treating the children, doing the children, amen, taking care of the children, it shows him the love of God. Men have to see the love of God. Amen, you just can't talk that to them. They have to see it being manifest through your lifestyle. Okay? Let's see here. This is what real love is. Real love is giving up what you like to do in order to make others happy. When have the last time you given up what you like to do to make your spouse or your significant other happy? Because if she ain't willing to do it now as girlfriend and boyfriend, uh, he ain't willing to do it as girlfriend and boyfriend, it ain't gonna happen when you become husband and wife. So marriage is not a selfish act. Marriage is when two people come into an agreement and then they give up things for the each other. Okay? Mutual love, mutual affection, amen, just to keep each other happy. Amen? That's real love. The Bible says this also, there's a cliche that's being said, that the best way to a man's heart as well. Look here. Subway good just for a little while now. Don't bring me no subway home every night. I don't need all them cold cuts in my body. Hey man, you see my cholesterol through the roof. I want to see what you're working with. Hello, somebody. Amen. And so listen, if you can't cook, get you some cookbooks. Because can't nobody eat at the store every night. Hello, I need to know you can't cook before I marry you. If I love you, it ain't gonna stop me from marrying you. Amen, but it ain't gonna help me assist you. Now, if I tell you, now look here, now, 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 I don't mind bringing one of my, my mom or my sister, somebody over to help me cook. I'll show you how to do some things. Amen, now if you got a problem with that, then you got a real problem. Because your whole goal is to help satisfy your man. So if there's a little help from the outside, you shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. And, and now, now, now it'll be a shame on them if they go and tell everybody she can't cook. <laughs> Then what she and the only one can't cook. Plenty of them that think they can cook can't cook. They can either put too much salt in it or not enough. They can't cook either. <laughs> and then this is where I will encourage you, baby. I didn't, I didn't marry you for your cooking ability. I'm not you because I love you. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Listen here. One thing as women, as women, because I know that more women in the church than men. Amen. You can't get to the point where you or you so heavenly minded that you don't earthly good. Amen. Your, your husband needs you to come down to planet Earth. Amen. All that you talk about is Jesus and me, the Jesus and you. Amen. They need to hear more about Jesus sometime. Hello, somebody. Amen. So, so, so. Now, listen. The biggest problem, a problem with marriages and relationships, is this one thing: is communication. No one wants to talk. Uh, if somebody want to talk, they want to do all the talking. That's not communication. That's you forcing your way on somebody. How in the world are we going to communicate and you doing all the talking? I ask you how your day go, and that's it. I can sit back and go to sleep. I have a second question. I won't get into there. I guess I have to ask you tomorrow. We got to have communication. I won't live in a house with somebody that I'm not communicating with. Amen. Listen, listen, y'all. Amen. Going to bed and being intimate ain't communication. Now, look at y'all. Uh, let me tell you something. All the time, some people want to see each other. They want to see each other. Husband, wife want to see each other when they get to the bedroom. That's it. Other than that, I ain't telling you why you're not watching this. Why you watching this? I'm doing some different opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you get time for the bedroom, I see that. There ain't no relationship. There ain't no marriage. Y'all just, y'all roommates. <laughs> Listen here. Every relationship, there has to be time spent together. Weekly basis, there has to be time spent together. Trust me, y'all, there has to be time spent apart. Please, get you some apart time. I love my wife, I believe she loves me, but I don't want to be around all the time. That's why I go to the golf course. That's why she's going to do her thing. Whatever, you know, she want to go shopping. Hey, that's what she do. Hey, man, we good. And hey, guess what? When I get back, how was your game? I said, oh, boy. I tell her I hacked it up. And sometimes I say, babe, I, I need a PGA. I, I should have been on home PGA today. But it's good to know that somebody's concerned about your day. 
And you need that time apart. I don't want to be a fun. Look here, I, want, I love y'all too. I want to be a fun y'all all the time. That's why we have church twice a week. I love y'all, but twice a week is enough. And occasionally we have more, but it's only on occasion. All right, so in other words, husband and wife need some time apart from each other. Hey Amen. Get with your. I, I can't, you can't call everybody your friend. Because everybody don't want to see you together. Whether you want to believe that or not. So I told y'all the other week, don't care nobody come, come, come talk that trash to me about, man, I seen your girl. You need to scrape them right there, Johnny, on the spot. You ain't that close. This is, let me tell you something. Because what, what happens is, when we get so spiritual, we miss Amen. We miss the blessing in the natural because God wants to do some things naturally as well. Now look here. Don't become, don't become a mother. Amen. Become a mother instead of a mother. Let me show that with you. Luke 10, 38 says this. Now it came to pass that they went and entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named, a woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had some, she called her sister Mary, and was also sat at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And heard the word. And Martha was cumbered about, about serving much. Martha wanted to serve him. And he came to him and came to him and said, Lord, do thou not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Martha chose to serve. It was her choice. Jesus didn't tell her to go cook nothing. She chose to serve. Okay? And, and he says, Be it her therefore that she helped me. And she, and Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Martha wanted to do earthly things, amen, Martha wanted to cook, but Mary ministered him in a whole different way. You got to make sure that you don't become mom. Thinking about your house and thinking about all these other things, but you better think about your man. Hello, somebody. Learn how to minister to them in the right way. Become so earthly, uh, heavenly bound that you know earthly good. We don't need that. Okay? Now, this is what the Bible says uh, the primary responsibility of you in. You have a responsibility. Amen? And, and, and guess what? Now, it, it doesn't say anything about how many hours you work. We understand that it takes two. We understand because that the Bible says something about a woman. We understand that it, it, we still can pitch in. Don't, don't take the scripture and use it just for your advantage. Take the scripture because guess what, y'all? This is your wife. That means that you got to have an input. Don't be the guy that's just telling them what to do but not willing to participate. It's almost like men say, well, baby, you need to lose some weight, but they ain't willing to go walking with them. If you want me to slim up that bad, let's go. Who I don't need, whether you need it or not, you need to be going. If you want to see a trim down, won't you go with them? Anybody can talk to y'all. <laughs> you trying to sneak some a long time in for yourself. That's what you want to do. Go, you go, so I have some a long time. Listen to what the Bible says in Titus 2. It talks about the woman. It tells us that the woman, it says, to be discreet, this is what the woman's job is, to be discreet, Chasing keepers at home. Some women are keepers at everybody else's house. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keepers at home. Not only are you a keeper at home, you're trying to take care your house, uh, and it take be it's a good. <laughs> now, if you listen, here. don't be a keeper at home and be bad. Be good. Obedient to their own husband. Well, you don't say this too many times, man. No, he ain't. He said just no. Now the word of God will not be blasphemed. So your job is to be keepers at your home. At your own house. Now listen now, if, if you if you if you're old female and you're not married, what you need to do now is practice how to be a keeper at your house. Now, I understand there's some men that's worse than some of y'all. There are some men that like filth. There's women that like filth. They live in it, and they have some men that die right on their will. <laughs> so y'all good man. You know, you just come to me complaining about you. Well, y'all knew y'all were like that before y'all got in together, so y'all just live in it. No, no, I'm sorry. That's why that was before now. 
That's why I, when I dated my wife, I went over on and out. Ain't no baby I come. I ain't no cell phone. I showed up. They now, I don't know if they talk about me or not. I ate over there every night. It fed me every night. I was fat me every night. I just showed up because I want to see how it really is. So I pop up. I find stuff in order, everything, ain't no roaches crawling all over the place. They hold it up over here, you know what I mean? Anytime they look at me, 11 o'clock, I'm popping. So I wasn't jealous, wasn't checking on, I just popping up. I'm under the influence of alcohol, y'all know that, right? <laughs> at that time. But everything's in order, every time I show up, everything's in order. So I'm like, okay, this girl, she, she, she's up the park, she, 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 she believes in staying clean and doing, you know, the keep, being a keeper of the, of the house. I didn't have this kind of knowledge then, I uh, when reading the Bible. You know what I mean? I only said something about God when I got too drunk and got so sick and said, Lord, I'll never do it again. That's the only time I talked to God. And he knew I was lying then. Amen. Thank you for his mercy. Thank you for his grace. Amen. So, 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 brother, if, if you don't live with, well, you need to show up on the knives. Hello? Show up on the knives. Y'all be bad as I am as your pastor. Just show up on the knives. Don't call nobody. Amen. Listen, now listen, now, 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 if, if, if the Bible tells us that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us, it means all things. Every one of us, y'all, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, every last one of us, there's room for improvement. But that's a problem when, and if, 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 if I sit you down and, and, and I begin to, we begin to dialogue and we begin to talk about your life and uh, what's going on in your house, and if your husband says something that you don't like, it, your job is to assess it and see if it's the truth. And if it is the truth, your job is to try to change it, not to try to make him feel bad. Y'all know how y'all do it. They ain't gonna tell the pastor. You ain't gonna tell the pastor that ain't that ain't no way. No, you been, who? Look here. I want to fix. And if I want to fix, Ben, you gonna go to the pastor and his wife, and we'll talk about it. And I'm gonna just let you know how I feel. Hello. That's a, listen here. Holding back ain't gonna fix nothing. And when you, hey man, now look here. I don't want nobody getting in their car and having a wreck getting back home because they mad with each other. No, we want to fix our problem. Help get our problems fixed. So if a husband say, I don't like you hanging your uh, stuff on the door. Over, over, you know, man, over the fan, all kind of stuff. Yeah, look at <laughs> You need to fix that. It's a, it's a simple problem. It's simple to you, but it's big to him. He want to feel all the air coming out of the fan. You know? <laughs> Amen. So, 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 y'all, look at y'all. So, so, what's wrong with giving in to that? Hey. What's wrong with giving in to that? It's okay, you got time on. What's wrong with giving in that? Everybody can give in to something. Everybody, look at y'all, relationship is giving and taking. Giving and taking. And it didn't tell you to do all the taking, taking, taking. It didn't tell you to do all the giving, giving, giving. It's equally giving and taking. So y'all can come to a mutual ground, a mutual agreement, and be there for each other. Your job is to support each other. Not to make each other feel bad. Uh, uh, belittle each other, but it's be a mutual affection one towards another. Look here. Anytime you get two people with two sides of the brains operating differently, you're going to have conflict. Automatically. You're a female, you're going to think of a male thing, and vice versa, you're going to have a little conflict, y'all. Can't nobody in here treat me like everything's all right all the time. <laughs> everything is all right all the time. Okay, I'm going to spot y'all because it's done. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah, they know we just got to lost. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We have problems, y'all. Everybody have problems. Yeah. The, problem, the thing is that we get them resolved before we fall out. Let's see, let me, see, I'm, I'm, let me go ahead on. Um, Proverbs 31 10, in the 28th verse, it talks about the, the description of an ideal wife and mother. It says, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and his, he praises her. Now look here, as a wife, are your children calling you blessed? Mm, mm, mm. Are your children calling you blessed? Huh? This is, this is, this is a virtuous woman now. Her children are calling her blessed. Her husband, he give 
give her praise. You just choose to call you blessed. What about your hood? Is he calling you blessed? Huh? Is he praising you? And now you need to check yourself. That's what the Bible says. Okay? Now, 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 now listen. If they don't, if they, if they, since you got this knowledge now, if they don't call you blessed, if your cousin don't praise you, is it their fault? Because you know we have a tendency to blame everybody but ourselves. Huh? So who fault is? Who is the blame? I do I put the spotlight, if, if, if I was a woman, do I put the spotlight on women, are you putting the spotlight on yourself, or are your husband just stupid? And your kids are just blind to the fact. Do you, now listen, the thing to do is, first of all, I'm not getting no praise, I'm not getting no praise from my husband, my kids are not calling me blessed, amen, I need to put the spotlight on myself. Why am I not getting these accolades from my family members? Because they don't see nothing in you. If you're raising hell, how in the world do you expect your kids, to, your husband to praise you and your kids to call you blessed? It's time for the right. Yes, ma'am. This is here what Proverbs 21 says. 19 verse says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness. Y'all hear me? The wilderness. Than to live with a contentious and an angry woman. Give me a tent and put me out there with the wolves. <laughs> Come on, Pup Pup. I don't know to live with you. I'm gonna live with a contentious woman. Why don't you say I'd rather live on a rooftop? Lord have mercy. They must be with them be running in the summertime because it's hot on the roof. Amen. So listen here. So, and so your, your, your husband not praising you, your children not calling you blessed. The Bible says it's better to live in the wilderness than to live with a contentious and an angry woman. And then if the man asks you, what's wrong with you, baby? Never. Don't never want to resolve an issue because you got hell in you. You don't want it to come out. Some people just want to have something to be angry for, or angry about. Just got to be mad all the time. How could you live with yourself? Angry, angry, angry. You need a real counseling session of two or three or four. Find out where did that come from? It was established. Because look here, y'all, I'm tell y'all something. Sometimes, listen here. One of the things, before and after comes in line, I'm almost close. I'm mean, going to have a few more passes. Let me take that back. A few more passes. One thing that comes into play is this, that before and after, because it ain't your job as a woman to size your husband up with your last boyfriend. Yeah, Ray, 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 yeah. Ray, Ray, took me out three times a week. Ray, Ray, got my nails done. Ray, Ray, got my manicure, pedicure. Ray, Ray, why are you Ray, Ray, still together? <laughs> I'm wondering about Ray, Ray. Ray was a smart man. He'd get up out of this hip, amen? So, 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 it, it, it's, it's unfair for any of us to bring up our exes. That's unfair to your mate. Hello, somebody. Because if you love them that much and they were that good, you'd still be with them. So it's unfair to come out what somebody else used to do. That's for me and them women right there. So, so why y'all let y'all y'all with yourself away? Well, well, tell your part. Because you can't speak for her. Or you can't speak for him. Tell your part. See, people try to people do that stuff to try to condemn you and try to get what they want. And another's manipulating spirit. Spirit of Jezebel. I talk about my own, my exes, to get you to do what I want you to do, but I can be on top, so I can have the advantage. Hello, somebody. That's not right. That's spirit of Jerry. That's a controlling spirit. Amen? Now, now, now you, you real bad and bold to throw up your ex to your wife or to your husband. You bad. Or even to your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You real bad. I wouldn't be putting over that. That's just me. How many of y'all know critical words destroy marriage? If your words are critical now, they'll be critical later. And that's God coming in. I'm not only just talking about sinners, I'm talking about right now, 
believers. Critical words are damaging. They will destroy your marriage. They cannot be retracted. Once they fall out of your lips, that is a done deal. The Bible tells us this in 1 Peter 3, 7 through 12. It says, First, likewise, ye husband, dwell with them according to knowledge. Give honor unto thy wife as a, as, as a weaker that's, I don't care what y'all call yourself. The Bible calls you the weaker best. And be heirs together in grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Now let's hear When a husband and a wife is not on the same accord, your prayer life is zero. Hello. Y'all want to understand the importance of getting along as husband and wife? That means that when you pray, God moves when you pray when you're on the same accord. Amen. When you are and fuss and fight, let me go ahead and pray this devil. Now look here. I don't look here, but one devil I know. His name is Satan. Ain't no man or woman devil. Hello, somebody. They may be letting the devil use him. Uh, amen, somebody. Uh, some familiar spirit or something. But, but there ain't, ain't nobody on devil. Don't fool yourself. You ain't married to the devil. Finally, you be like being all one mind, having compassion one towards another. Now look here. Listen, y'all, I, I, I don't get this. I don't get this. I don't get this. How can we be compassionate towards other sisters and brothers in the church, but we can't be compassionate towards one another? Hello. Oh, I love your prophet. Oh, I love your sister. So I ain't told your spouse you love me in a long time. It's hard to be compassionate. The Bible says charity begins where? And then it spreads as a problem. So compassion starts at your house. You should call that Compassion International. That starts at your house. Oh boy. The Bible says, not, not, verse says, not rendering evil for evil. Now listen here. Because somebody wronged you, if your husband wronged you, doesn't mean that you wronged him back. Amen. The Bible talks about raising for raising because he talked to you harsh, she talked to you harsh. Doesn't mean that you're going to give it back to them the same way they gave it to you. You know what our problem is? We want to feel like we're the one. Both of us out the will of God. How do you win? <laughs> See, some of us still trying to prove how grown we is. This Bible, y'all, y'all see it? Is it not running evil for evil or railing for railing, but uh, contrary? Uh, contrary, contrary uh, blessing, knowing that all that you are, there are called that should be an inheritance of the blessing. See, so when we walk on the same accord, when we know how to give us the right to wrong, you know what I mean? I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. How many of y'all going to walk and raise your hand? How many of y'all going to walk away? How many of y'all going to walk away and not say anything bad about your name? That's when you get into it. That's when you know that you're arriving, when you're able to just walk away. Let them have that. Pray for them. For he that love will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking no God. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him speak peace and ensure it. <laughs> Unto their prayer, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. When you sit there toe to toe and say harsh things to one another. You ain't on God's good side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe he do deserve it. Maybe you think she do deserve it. But guess what? Do you have to really give it still? Because you feel that they deserve it? You don't have to do that. Hey man, somebody ought to be the big person and say, hey, you know what? That's how you feel. I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm not going to get into that because guess what? You got to reap what you sow. You know what I mean? So, so guess what? Now because you get the last word don't mean that you win. Before and after. We gotta realize that's a before and after. Amen. Now listen, before you get married, amen, I, I, look at I encourage, if you single, if you single and you can last, you don't have to be married, bro, sis, you, 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 you good. You, you are in a better place actually than married for, if you can hold out. I ain't trying to, it, I'm, I'm just saying if you can hold out. If you got a doubt if you can hold out or not, you need to get married. If you can hold out, you'll be a better, you'll be in a better place than any of us married for. You know why? You got no restrictions. When God tell you to get up 3 o'clock in the morning and go to Georgia, you can jump in your car. You ain't got to check in with nobody. Hello? Husband or 
don't like me. You say, oh, yeah, God, leave me to Georgia. See what I'm saying? Let's ride a hoop. God ain't leave you to Georgia. You may have a conflict right there before you got to bed. <laughs> He ain't told me you go to Georgia, amen. <laughs> but yeah, so, so you don't have anybody to check in with, amen. If, if, if you can hold out, that is. If you, the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. If you have a desire to, uh, to, to get busy, you better find you some, look here, don't rush. Don't get no rush now. Pray, be prayerful. Be prayerful that God, guess what, send me somebody who's going to be a blessing to me, and I'm going to be a blessing to him. Amen. Now let's get he may don't have two niggas to run together. God, 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 you told God you want somebody who's gonna be a blessing to you. It may not always come financially blessing. Finance ain't everything, y'all. Man, it, it helps out and it does a lot, but it ain't everything. Because that's the people that are financially stable and unhappy. Know why? Cost of the money. She's scared he's gonna spend more than her. They're the country that spend the money. Instead of them coming together on the same accord and say, hey, let's discipline ourselves. We all want to spend this much of money. You know, you get this and you get that. And man, you know, I mean, that's one thing I'm grateful for. Me and my wife ain't never had no money fall out. Fall out. You know what I mean? Well, I, well, if I made most of it tonight, it didn't make no difference. It was our money. Listen, all you women that are married and boyfriend, girlfriend, oh, I ain't made for 300 this week. And you made 475. Bro, you better do some homework. Yeah, you know I mean, this is bad. We got. I, I, I'm not gonna run nobody down. And take no checks to them. <laughs> Hello. Listen, because guess what? If you're doing that kind of stuff, you're working against each other. The Bible says a house divided against itself will not stand. Hey Amen. Look here. Your money, my money, my money is your money. It's our money. Amen. Amen. Listen, y'all, if, if my wife wants to go outside and jump in my truck and go somewhere, as long as I got some keys in the car, go I won't go. If I need to go, if I need to go, I ain't gonna go because you, you drive my gas out. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead on, baby. You may want to go pick, up, pick, pick me up at a new set of golf clubs. I don't want you know, put them in the back of the truck. I don't know what you do. As long as I can get where I'm going, it's cool. And I don't want to bring it up. Remember the last time? I'm going to drive your car. Remember the last time you drove my <laughs> Y'all don't know people still deal with that kind of stuff. <laughs> listen here. Listen here. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you one of the reasons why you don't do that kind of stuff. Because sometimes that man or that woman going to jump in your car or your truck and go fill it up. Say, oh, you know what? I, can't, I forgot. I can't drive your car. No more because I was going to go fill it up. But uh, I can't get it no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> Amen. Listen, so sometimes you don't realize you're missing your blessing. Amen. Listen, y'all, when your money's when, when y'all money becomes separate, God can't bless. It's, it's blue on. God can't bless when you if you're not willing to share your money with whoever you are involved with or whoever you're gonna marry, then guess what? You you y'all you, 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 you ain't gonna work. Your money cannot be separate. I understand that if you got a business and he got a business, and that's one thing, that's business. Y'all should have a general account where things coming to, where money's coming to, that both of y'all know how much is in there. Hey Amen. Now look here. If I take $2.25, I don't need you to call me now. If it gets above two fifty, dollars hey amen, if it gets above a certain amount, we need to be checking in with each other. Does that make sense? Sweet. Well, let me say it like this. We need to be checking in with each other anyway. This is the problem that we can sometimes, we as men, we go, oh, man, I do what I want to do. I made more. But guess what? It's our money. It's a team member. I need to let my wife know that you're involved. It's not me alone. I tell you what, get sick. Go to the hospital and you can't pay your own bill. That woman come out and say, you got it? You paid your bill? You know, man, they got me on. I can't hardly get up. Well, hey, you been there. You say, you ain't need me. You got it. Do y'all not understand? Hey, man, this is a team. This is a team thing. It's team. You know, I am team. It takes both of us. Working together for a common cause. And then when you start pulling apart, guess what, y'all? House divided will not stand. Don't let money become an issue. Your love should overrule money or anything else that comes in your life. Amen? Sometimes we're going to be up, y'all. Sometimes we're going to be down. Sometimes we're going to have a plenty. Of, and sometimes we're going to be running on empty. Don't start falling out. Don't, don't be one. Look here, y'all. When we, it's amazing when people get broke, intimacy go out the door right along with the money. Huh? You ain't got no money to get your hair done? Intimacy go out. No, I'm telling you. 
intimacy goes out the window. Right on with the light, that light bill money. You pay that. You want to pay for the light song? Mm. That's your job. Pay the light bill. Then how this go, y'all? You can't, you can't let nothing stop because you just, you dead broke. You can't let nothing, you got each other. And, and, and that's what it's supposed to be about. Maybe you know we broke, we got a grocery and then life on water run. We got each other. Let's, let's, let's hug up. Let's got like we ask the moles out and like hug up and stay warm. <laughs> Amen. Because y'all, you, you know what we're doing? Y'all, we, we're predicating our relationship and our relationship on what folk have, y'all. You're not going to always have. And if I'm getting with you because what you have, when you lose what you got, that means I'm going to. Come on, y'all. It's more about what we have and what we're giving each other. It's about simple love. L-O-V-E. It's first start with Jesus. You get him, he teaches us how to love. Okay? You cannot love properly outside of Jesus. We got lust, we got infatuation and things of that sort, but real love comes from Christ Jesus. And once we get him, we know how to love and how to treat each other. Amen. And this is in closing. We are going to have disagreement. It doesn't mean that you get a divorce because the first time you disagree about something. First time. And I hate to hear the word. I hate to hear the word. I hate to hear the word. I hate to hear that word that when things are not going, when things was happy and, and money wasn't funny, your chain wasn't trained, oh, we the happiest couple on the planet. But all of a sudden stuff starts falling apart. And guess what? It ain't nobody's fault. The Bible says there's a time and season for everything. It just shows season to be broke. And you know you should talk about a divorce because we broke now. Hello, somebody. Hey, Amen. So, so what we have now is our love. Let's be content with the love that we have. And let's pray to God that God will take us through the season. Hey, Amen. Because the season, hey, Amen, it don't last always. The sun is going to shine again. So let's hang in there with each other and maintain, amen, and love each other for who we are. Amen. No use your wishes on I want you to look like Beyonce. Well, you should have tried to get Beyonce before deep. What is that Jay-Z guy? That's who you want it. I don't want no Beyonce. Come on, somebody. Your money ain't that tall. <laughs> Y'all yeah, be grateful, man. If you find your wife and you were broke when you found your wife, she still love you. That's something. That means a lot. That means if you ever become somebody, don't forget about it. Because she was with you through the thick, the thin, when you had nothing, when you was a zero, now you're a hero, sticking that way. Not everybody else wants you because you got a little stuff. It don't work. Hey man, listen, I see it all the time. We see it all the time on television, man. People go from this, from zero to a hero, and now all of a sudden the girl who's in high school, who loves them through high school, she ain't no good no more. It's not women on another status. It's looking at it. So, that's what y'all ain't about that. It's about true love. You mean? And it's definitely hard to find. It, it, it ain't impossible. I said it's just hard. Amen to find. So we got to put our eyes in the right places to get what we need. Amen? Before that, brother realize. <laughs> God bless y'all. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs>